I'm Leslie Garrity, music director here at St. Peter's Catholic Church. We are starting a multi-part series today, and we are going to tackle that burning question everyone is afraid to ask. Why can't church music be cooler? Well, let's talk about it. Let's not be afraid of that question, and let's talk about it. So I want to start with something that might help us get some perspective on music and liturgy, and that is its role in the liturgy and its function in the liturgy or the mass. And I think an easier way to understand it is to imagine that you've come out of church. Imagine you run into an acquaintance, maybe someone you don't know really well, but you've never seen them at church. And they say, oh, hey, uh, you know, I came to mass today. And you say, that's great. What, what did you think? How was it for you? And you know, what brought you here today? And you're just having a casual conversation. And this acquaintance shares with you that they have never been to a mass. In fact, they were agnostic or atheist. They weren't raised in any sort of religious tradition. And they're curious. And they say to you very seriously and in all sincerity, they say to you, you know, there is so much good literature out there. Why, why are you reading, why are you so stuck on reading the Bible and every reading? Why not, why not headlines of the day that we can discuss how to respond in a godly way? Or, you know, why not a good murder mystery? Or, okay, now I'm joking. But seriously, if someone were to ask you that, it would be very easy for you to understand and explain well, you know, we're here to hear from the word of God. We want to sit at the feet of Jesus and be taught and learn and soak up his word. And that is very easy for most of us to understand. Now, if we turn to music and we want to talk about the role of music in the liturgy and the function of music in liturgy, let me give you some examples that might make you chuckle because of their extremity. I mean, I think it might be really cool if our priests were to like groove in, jam, and enter to something like. I mean, really, can't, can't you see like how that would, everyone would be so happy. We're walking into church where, you know, here comes the entrance. Well, maybe you're chuckling right now. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're in full agreement. But the thing about that is, that's a different kind of music, and it doesn't necessarily evoke reverence. And for us in the church, when we have that opening hymn, the function is to focus on, put the focus on God, to put away all of the stress and care of the, of the world and of the week, and to get our hearts and minds prepared to worship the Lord and to listen to the Lord and to put our focus on him. So we want one of the words that our, our great tradition uses is reverence. We do want something that's reverent. And that is cool and fun and hip, and it does bring joy, which you are allowed to have in church, by the way. Um, but it might not be as reverent as we're looking for. So that, that gathering hymn should, uh, is, is really meant to have words that everybody can sing. You know, post-Vatican II, we're looking for the full and active participation of the congregation in our singing and in our worship and in our words and our response to the priest. And so that function there is for a gathering hymn. Uh, we're either going to praise God or we're going to um, even maybe use words about gathering. We're gathered here today to worship the Lord. Um, so that is the function. So that's an example of um, why not just any sort of upbeat entrance music would work in the church today. And I want to leave you with some good news, and that is that the Catholic Church is not done figuring out its music tradition. You know, we'll talk more in future series about Vatican II and its, its effect on music and where we are, are at in the history of church music. Um, but the Catholic Church is really just beginning to figure out its tradition and its music. And there is definitely room for different styles. There's definitely room for joy and meaning. 
Um, but there are guidelines that we have to follow. And I personally believe that maybe some of the best music has yet to be written. Um, but as some of you know, I'm newer on the scene here and um, am actively looking for songs that connect with the congregation that are beautiful and reverent and honor the function and the purpose of the liturgy. So I'm excited to explore this question and for us to explore some of these music options. And we hope you have a great day.